Hey, welcome back, everybody. Hey, guys. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, Eddie here, but that's because Eddie is uh, not a sound as designer. Sound designer. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Sound designer. Those guys just cease to exist when you no longer need them for sound purposes, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, that's why uh, I only contact Eddie when I need him on a, a project. So if you notice, I finally figured out what to do with that uh, nitrogen container. Oh. All right. Yep. How would you know to do that? Uh, well, you can actually shoot this wall when you're standing on this power pad. And we have the other power pad out there, but it's malfunctioning. So, I mean, there's, you can kind of tell that there's something up with them, but it's really hard to tell. Um, but you shoot it and then nothing happens, right? And you're like, well, maybe if I freeze it, then I can break it and then... That what works. does the power pad normally do? What is its purpose? It literally is just so you can shoot your your gun, your high temperature slug gun. Interesting. So if you notice... What was the little crawling thing in the corner there? He's a hybrid. Oh, great. It has fallen from the operating table only to crawl around in aimless... Uh, I can't see that word. It's too far away. It's like peregrination. I've, n I've never No doubt word. delirious. So this is a room of varying levels of um, mutated hybrids. So these are just like strapped down hybrids. Then we have a withered hybrid. We've got a tiny hybrid and an anticipated, uh, an yeah, uh, emaciated. Ama thank you. Wow. Yep. It's it's really hard to read it. From the text. Where we're at. Yeah, the text is really small in, in the TV across the room. But either way, <clears throat> it's kind of. You can even hear that violin music in the background, so it's kind of sad, but at the same time, disturbing. And, I mean, if these if these hybrids' lives weren't already bad to begin with, they have to play <laughs> sad violin music in the background. Eugenics war. I taught this in my history class. Out of the eugenics war? Yeah. So oh my. Some of the PDAs so far have made reference to a eugenics war, and you, the first time I saw it, I was like, What? Um, but this is sort of a response to the eugenics war. Um, we find out that, that the main doctor, he, uh, he kind of went a little off the wall and was like, they failed in the eugenics war and I'm going to show them what they did wrong. Oh my. And it was that morality still got in the way even then. Yeah. Pretty fucked up. Uh, so we picked up a bone mending, uh, glue this seriously drove me crazy for a, a, a long time to the point where i had to look at a walkthrough again but it's hidden on this table right here and uh i i went back and forth through all these rooms looking for it and i could not find it because it was just so well hidden um and it's just it was another one of those things where it was sitting right there that whole time this time without a little sparkly glow i think man the veins of the laboratory are sensibly bound to the ceiling. So I think this is a little bit of a, a glitch because um, whenever it, it loads, it um, it puts the cursor in the upper left corner of the screen, and I think it does that during loading screens. Um, but it detected the, uh, the the hover text, so uh. it just like it. It's I mean it's a really really minor defect. Oh yeah, that's like not, that's not a deal. It's. jammed it earlier i know right now that we're emotionally torn up <laughs> the, the interesting thing about that moment too is that 
I think at the point in which she decides to jam your signal, um, it, it kind of makes you feel like she's up to something, you know? Like, he's gonna spill the beans on something and uh, you're not supposed to know. It's very possible. I mean, it might be one of those things as simple as uh, your wife and kid were dead the whole time, and then if she, if he finds out, then he's not going to even bother helping her anymore. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Could be one of those things. I mean, at this point, I feel like we should just expect our, our wife and, and kid to be dead. But, yeah. You know. I'm expecting you... the, the wife to be dead and the daughter to be like some terrible monster that has to get shut away <laughs> in some airlock or something. I... That's pretty much what I expected at the very beginning of the game, and uh, well, I, I've I've finished the game at this point, but you'll you'll get to see what kind of good stuff are in store. Oh man! So that bone glue uh, basically gave us this power cell imprint, which now we can use that to attach it to this twisted metal, and then use this to unlock them. The twisted metal, since we've held since very early in the game. No, we only we tore that off the robot. Really? So last I episode. We got a while ago. <laughs> a while ago for us. Because it feels we like a week ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, can't can't uh, record more than like seven episodes in a sitting. Brain goes squishy. That's pretty much it, man. I mean that, and we all have day jobs, so it's like I don't know. And other YouTube channels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, especially Arcane Duels. I don't know if I've whined about this on, on uh, Game Devs Play Games yet. I've talked about how... Uh, what? I didn't even mean to do anything. I've certainly talked about Arcane Duels on this channel, but I haven't talked about how much more time it takes to edit those episodes than these. Like, we started... I started this channel before I jumped on board Arcane Duels, if I recall right. Um, and... These episodes used to take me a little while to edit. It would take me, like, you know, around, like, 30 minutes to an hour per episode, depending on what it was, and that's because I would throw in a lot of goofy animations. Oh, by the way, we just removed the power cell in this, so these women are dying. Oh, good. Well. But we get an achievement for mercy. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, the, just sitting there. All right. Game awesome. never ceases to be depressing it, when it wants to be. Yeah, no, they're gonna let you know that the character you're playing is not not having a good time about all of this. No, I actually that's I think still one of my favorite things about this game is Absolutely. that he has a legitimate sense of empathy, which um, even in games that seem to try to have that, still generally don't do a very good job. Yeah, that does seem to be like a failure on that part. Huh. Maybe it's because there's that problem of wanting to show the it, how the character's uh, reality is and how they're taking in things and their empathy versus the fact that um, they need to make sure that the game is moving at a progressive tempo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It makes me think of... Uh... Oh, man, I can't remember the name of it. It was a PlayStation 3 game that was super, um, like, people thought it was crazy because it was basically an interactive story that relied on quick time events. Um, but it was a game about saving your daughter and uh, from a serial killer, and you had to do a lot of just crazy shit to try to save her. Um, and that was a game where I think they really tried to instill a sense of empathy in the main character, but it gets to the point where it stops making sense anymore, like he's jumping through electrical conduits, like basically risking his life, he's like dragging his butt, crawling through like tunnels of broken glass and stuff, and it's like, it, you know, if my daughter was kidnapped, I would probably want to do the same too, but it still didn't quite read that he was going crazy or um, still like just totally it stressed out just about the felt like a video game it, it turned into that point and I never finished the game so maybe it came full circle you know but uh, it's possible well I mean Final Fantasy 7 uh, one of the jokes about it is oh no Aerith died let's go snowboarding <laughs> <laughs> And it's like she dies and then you have like one moment of like, oh, that's sad. Let's like drop her into the water and then this stuff happens. I don't know. And then after that, 
you kind of you just like kind of forget about it but the thing was at the time every person who played that game this is crazy by the way i know isn't this awesome we also totally just tore up this hybrid on here that is intense yeah but every player at that time was... Oh, every player at that time was, like, distraught over it. They mm-hmm. were really upset because everybody likes using that character. Everybody liked that she was, like, the only beacon of innocence and hope in the entire world. Well, that's why it was mechanically, like, me- or game design-wise, that was in- very intelligently done. Oh, it was. And then they kind of... After that, they kind of let it down because at the time, players were still upset about it. Mm -hmm. Players were still upset about it, and the the characters had already moved on. And that was one of the few times that it it happened because they hit it home so well. But they didn't give the player any extra time just to be like, yeah, yeah, that's really upsetting. Instead, they were like, here's something to cheer you up. Snowboarding. Yeah, it's a little silly. All right, well, should we end it here? Yeah, probably. That's a good point. Cool. Um, after we just killed a bunch of hybrids and stuff. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so we got some really interesting stuff coming up, so stay tuned. But uh, we will see you in the archives. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. The other day, Rachel was saying something about cooking with breadcrumbs, and it warranted me saying, Oh, yeah, motherfucking <laughs> breadcrumbs. I'm so happy that this happened.